Hey, this is the second video about the transmission on this Dodge 1979 camper. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the fluid in it. This fluid was particularly burnt. If you want to see the transmission cooler install, you can check out the other one in the link below. I didn't do a particularly elegant job, but I did get it done. And uh, this is for all you uh, people like me out there just trying to do what you can do. So this is the fluid I've got. Apparently it takes nine quarts and this is a filter I have right here for this particular vehicle. Of course they send two along, two gaskets along and the actual filter is floating around here somewhere right there. So what I got going here is a little adapter to put in my gun here in a half inch socket. I'm going to use this to try to get all those bolts out. You can see down here that this gasket is leaking anyway. I had a shop work on this and for some reason the gasket just doesn't quite work. So I'm glad that I get a chance to take this off here anyway. And my little screw gun don't work so I'm going to have to use this. But I know they're not that tight because I tighten these earlier. They come right off this way. So I'll probably just loosen these all up this way and then use that gun to take them all the way off. Alright, so they're all loose. So now I can just spin them out. Of course, in a minute this whole thing is going to come down and it's going to leak fluid all over. So I'm going to try to avoid getting that on my drill because generally oil and water and great quantities aren't that great for a drill or pretty much any other bit of electronic or electric machinery. Maybe I can set this down somewhere. Yeah. Well, that about does it. Coming out. Just like that. Definitely going to need a bit of oil dry. And a few paper towels. So it's pretty obvious by now that I have a lot to learn about videotaping. And about taking transmission pans off. The best way that I've seen to do that is take a box and line it with plastic. And then put the transmission fluid in there. But I was too much in a hurry to do that so I got transmission fluid all over my pavement. But that's alright, oil dry does a wonderful job cleaning that up. And I think given some time this thing will probably be fine too. But I'm gonna finish taking this off and uh, cleaning it up and put this camera out of the way. Alright so now that I found some oil dry I'm back under here and I'm going to take this transmission filter off and there's three screws right here, here, and here. And they more than likely just come right out, but I'm going to need two hands, so not that big a deal. So I'm just going to take them off and put this new filter on, just like that. So this is a transmission pan after I've washed it. I was going to paint it, but that side looks like it's doing just fine the way it is. And I want to get this back on. I'm going to steel brush this here for a little bit just to get all the old gasket off. And I'm going to use this uh, angle grinder with a wire brush on it. So this filter comes with two gaskets and you got to figure out which one is the right one for this particular application. I have no idea. I'm guessing I might have picked the right room by accident. Let's see what this one is. That's a little different shape isn't it? So I use this one. I'm going to put some RTV black adhesive sealant on this side. And then on this side, just going to smooth it down. It leaked continually before, 
And I didn't like that. So I'm going to put this down this time. I usually use a plastic glove, but I don't have any right now, so I'm just going to use this. All right, so I'm back under here, and I'm going to basically tighten these things to, well, just about five pounds of pressure. It's the next day, and I've done a fair bit of research on exactly how to put these uh, transmission pans back on. And it turns out that RTV sealant isn't necessarily the best recommended method. So apparently what most people say is just use the cork gaskets, and that works better. Um, but... On the other hand, if you do use RTV sealant, the main thing is to wait 24 hours for it to cure, because otherwise the oil can turn it into goop, and that goop goes through your transmission, and it eventually messes it up. Also, when you tighten these up, uh, there's recommendations ranging anywhere from 7.5 pounds of pressure to, I think, 12.5 pounds of pressure is the exact specification. But as you can see, I am just tightening these till it feels right. Basically this is a gasket, so you don't want to squish the gasket to smithereens. And you also don't want to leave it loose so that gasket has room for the stuff to seep out alongside of it. So like I said, there's lots of different ways to do this. Some people recommended putting a bit of wheel bearing grease on one side of the gasket, I think on the pan side. And that way it comes off easier. And other people, well, you know, everybody's got an idea. But the main thing is you don't want it to leak. And wherever you do that, um, you know, that's what you want to do. So like you see, I'm tightening these just to what seems right. And I've been doing this for a while, so I get a sense of when a bolt's going to break. But one thing you don't want to do is you do not want to break one of these bolts off. Um... And so you really don't need that much pressure. And if you have a long wrench like I do or a long ratchet like I do, um, you can get a lot of leverage without really meaning to. So you got to be kind of careful. And sometimes it's helpful to hold it a little further in like I'm doing right here so you don't use all that leverage that's available. So I'm just going to go around one more time, tighten them up. And you can always tighten a little bit more. But basically I put that RTV on. It uh, here and now I'm tightening a little bit more. And hopefully this works for me. I mostly use the RTV because whoever installed this last time just used one of those plastic uh, black gaskets or whatever that thing was. And it didn't work very well and I was tired of this thing leaking. So I really wanted it not to leak. But we'll see what kind of results I get with this. Again, the main thing is do not tighten your bolts too tight uh, to the point where they either squeeze the dickens out of the cork gasket or where they break off and then you got a real problem. So I think that's done down here. I'm going to go put the fluid in and see how it works. I am fairly sure that I can think of a better way to do this, but all I'm doing here is taking an old funnel, kind of putting it down here, and hopefully I can get just the right angle where I can pour this stuff in here without it going all over the engine. So while I do this, I just want to talk a little bit about the joy of having one of these campers. This thing is old. It's a 1979 camper. In fact, I don't think that this engine has really ever been gone through thoroughly and completely, at least not for 15 or 20 years. And it's just got, well, pretty much everything that is part of it needs to be fixed or replaced or taken care of. But personally, I really get a lot of joy out of driving this old truck around. It's, um, you know, it's distinctive. People kind of give you a shout out once in a while. They smile because they remember they used to have one just like it. First time we took it to get weighed um, because we had to figure out how much it weighed for the Secretary of State. We took it over to a, um, a salvage yard that had a scale and we heard they would weigh it for us. And the lady who on, was on the sort of intercom thing uh, said, Hey, where did you get that or how long have you had it? And she said, Well, my parents used to have two of them actually that were just like that you know one after another 
And that was kind of our initiation into realizing that this whole camper brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people. And it's also, you know, kind of what we can afford right now. And I just really like the distinctiveness of it. Whoops. And the fact that it's unique. And it's fairly easy to fix in terms of, you know, it's not necessarily easy to fix, but it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of electronics on it. The other thing about these old campers is that uh, it's a fairly common engine. The Dodge C60 and the 727 Torque Flight transmission is a fairly common engine. So there's a lot of resources out there and a lot of websites that are dedicated to it because people love their old Dodges. And if you want to find out something about it, you can actually get a couple different opinions and quite a few different thoughts about your particular problem. Like with this particular uh, tranny issue that I just dealt with, I learned a lot about different types of fluids. Uh, turns out a lot of people recommend uh, type F fluid, tranny fluid, which is actually a Ford uh, transmission fluid. I'm getting oil in my alternator, which isn't what I want to do here. Because uh, a type F transmission fluid apparently gives a stronger or more sharp shift, but it also lacks certain detergents. So if I was really concerned about the shift, I'd probably do more research into that particular um, transmission type of fluid. I'd probably go to a local tranny shop, ask some old guys what's going on. But I really don't care how it shifts. I just want a transmission that works. And of course, the kids really enjoy hanging out in this camper too. So it's, uh, it's really all good. When we're out here as a family together and it's working right, it really brings a lot of life and has a lot of good times. So I'm going to keep pouring these uh, quarts in here and wait till I get to nine. That's just three so far and I'll uh, see how it runs. I know from experience that this transmission will not shift if it doesn't have enough oil in it so or if transmission fluid in it. So as you know you need to test these transmissions with the engine running otherwise the level will be off. So I have put about one, two, three, four, five. I put about five quarts in here and it seems to be full already. So I'm gonna test it right here and then we'll, uh, we'll see how it works after I drive it around a little bit. I also wanna show you the difference in the old transmission fluid versus the new. And of course, this is the old, rather burnt transmission fluid. It might have a bit of oil in it, but that was pretty dark. That's not what you want in your transmission. And I basically just noticed that on my dipstick when I was checking the fluid levels. This, of course, is a brand new fluid. And there's great pictures online if you want to take a look to see the range of how burnt your fluid might be. But um, this is obviously not good at all. That'll wreck your transmission. And indeed was causing some problems in mine. I might have burnt it up already. I'm not sure. But this is new. That's what you want. And that's the big difference in transmission fluid. So it's been about a week since I worked on this transmission. And I am happy to be able to report that although I haven't quite cleaned up the driveway yet, there are no leaks coming from this uh, transmission pan or a front where I put the tranny cooler on. Uh, if you have any questions though, if you watch this at some point and have any questions and want to know more about some aspect of the camper or anything else, uh, feel free to make a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.